This is Evan Meeks. I'm an orthopedic surgeon, sports medicine specialist with the University of Texas Health Science Center, Houston. And I'll be discussing ACL reconstruction using UltraTrack all inside quad autograft with backfill of uh, Regenitin bioinductive implant for the quad closure. I use the UltraTrack all inside quad harvest system in order to optimize visualization and reproducibility of my quad harvest. I like to use quadriceps tendon, so a strong graft that does regenerate over the following six months. I backfill using the regenerative bioinductive implant in order to facilitate the infiltration of fibroblasts and increase collagen deposition over the following three months, forming a new tendon-like tissue and completely reabsorbing within six months. I like to choose the quad autograft as a a graft for ACL reconstruction in high-level cutting, pivoting, and contact athletes, as well as frequent kneelers due to religion or work, revision, ACL reconstruction cases, athletes with a history of patellotendinitis, or young athletes that still have open growth plates. I start with a two or three centimeter vertical incision in order to isolate the quadriceps tendon off the superior pole of patella. A horizontal incision can be made. We sharply dissect using scalpels and medicine bomb scissors and then get a view of the quadriceps tendon to mark the medial border. After removing the subq fat, we then assemble and use the guide track to elevate the subcutaneous fat off of the entirety of the quadriceps tendon. As you can see here, the Q view allows full visualization of the quad harvest site. There's no need for assistance, there's no need for other specialized retractors. And in assembling, you can move your viewpoint medial lateral in order to dial in the exact track for your cutter. I use the guide track and 10 millimeter track cutter to make the medial and lateral incisions of the quad graft. The track cutter is a single use blade and provides consistent and smooth cut as you will see here. I like to make sure that I'm riding alongside the VMO on the medial edge of the quad tendon in order to maximize the length I can harvest. I then will remove the quad tendon from the superpolar patella using sharp scalpel and metal bomb scissors. We slowly elevate the quadriceps tendon from surrounding tissue and the capsule just posterior. A temporary tag stitch uh, or traction stitch will then be placed at the distal aspect of the graft in order to fully capture the tendon and hold traction while we slowly dissect using the quad cutter to the proximal aspect of the graft. Once we have fully freed the graft, we load the sutures into the quad cutter and advance it proximally the full length of the graft. I feel that it's important to take a partial thickness graft and not violate the joint capsule as I feel this joint capsule violation contributes to arthrofibrosis as well as postoperative pain. With the ease of the squeeze of a trigger, we're able to harvest a almost full thickness quadriceps autograft without violating the joint capsule. As you can see, the graft is thick, very robust. I start the closure of the harvest site using an absorbable suture such as Vicryl. And I like to run the suture throughout the harvest site without capturing the capsule. Well, once this is closed and tensioned appropriately, I place my Regenitin bioinductive implant over the distal aspect of the harvest site or the attachment site to the superpole patella. I center it over the bone and the tendon, and I like to attach the four corners using interrupted vicral sutures. Alternatively, the regenerative bioinductive implant can be anchored to the surrounding tendinous tissue using the tendon anchors. For the graft preparation, we use the ultra button quad and ultra button tib adjustable fixation devices following the standard technique to prepare the construct on the X-wing graft preparation system. We ended the scene with a great 10 millimeter graft that easily passed through our sizer. I like to shoot for a 65 to 70 millimeter graft length when performing the all inside technique. And this is in order to appropriately tension the graft in the femoral and tibial tunnel sockets. For the femoral tunnel, we're using a 10 millimeter size pinpoint guide to preview the footprint location for drilling in the anatomic insertion of the femoral side of the ACL. I then use the TrueNav retrograde drill system to place the 2.5 millimeter guide wire anagrade into the knee joint and then get a view of the full femoral tunnel length. And as seen here in this case, it's approximately 32 millimeters. With the 2.4 millimeter guide wire in place, I'll drill into the knee joint using the TrueNav retrograde drill. And once we've drilled anti-grade into the knee joint, we'll engage the TrueNav retrograde drill and retrograde drill our tunnel to a depth of at least 20 millimeters. When drilling, we can assess our tunnel depth 
by watching the marks on the TrueNav retrograde drill. This helps us get a more accurate tunnel depth when we're shooting for our 20 millimeter depth. And once the tunnel is complete, we'll pass our passing suture into the knee joint. And go ahead and run your passing sutures to ensure there's no soft tissue incarcerations or impingements, as this will only decrease your surgery time and prevent any surgical complication. And for the tibial side, I'll place my footprint location at the anterior portion of the ACL footprint, coinciding with the anterior lateral meniscus root. We'll then drill into the knee joint and retrograde our tunnel, creating a tunnel length of 25 to 30 millimeters. Uh, I prefer to at least have 15 millimeter tunnel length on both the femoral and tibial side. Using the UltraGrab Suture Manager, we then pass an alternate color stitch through the tibial tunnel for easy identification of the femoral and tibial passing sutures. I then shuttle the femoral ultra button quad sutures into the tibial tunnel and knee joint as well as then into the femoral tunnel. I like to change portals with my scope so I can observe the flip of the button on the outside of the lateral cortex of the femur and then partially reduce the femoral ultra button and begin bringing the graft into the intraarticular space. By visualizing into my femoral tunnel, I can ensure that the button has flipped. In pulling traction, there is no increased play, which would signify that my button was caught on the lateral soft tissues. The graft is then slowly brought in to the knee joint, ensuring that there's no problems with suture management and there's no issues with incarcerated sutures or passing sutures. Now that we have passed our tibial passing suture, we'll load the tibial end of our ACL graft and pass it into our tibial tunnel. We will reduce the tibial side prior to tensioning on our femoral side. We use our hemostats to ensure there's no soft tissue obstructions on our graft and the, the graft can be fully introduced into the knee joint. And we visualize the tibial aspect of our graft being pulled down into the tibial tunnel. Um, with the tibial side engaged, we can transition to tensioning our femoral side. Using our reduction bar, we will draw 15 to 20 millimeters of the graft on the femoral side into the femoral tunnel. And then we'll pull traction on the tibial stump to ensure appropriate tensioning as well as graft placement within our tunnels. We carefully remove our protection stitch off of the UltraTrack tib button system. And we'll carefully place our button within our two loops in order to then tension the tibial aspect of the graft and final tension our graft. We'll use slight traction on the button as we slowly advance the button into the anteromedial aspect of the tibia and knee. And we'll shuttle the button in without incarcerating our skin. And once we're Inside, we'll hold the graft in position, and while holding the knee at 20 or 30 degrees of flexion, we'll perform final tensioning on the graft. Go back into the knee joint using our arthroscopic camera for final examination of our ACL. In our post-operative protocol and physical therapy rehabilitation for the ACL reconstruction using quad tendon autograft and biologic augmentation from Regenitin bioinductive implant, Weight-bearing is tolerated with consideration given for other potential meniscal or cartilage procedures. Immediate physical therapy, preferably within two to three days, with immediate home range of motion exercises to begin regaining quad strength and function, and use of crutches for assistance with ambulation for one to two weeks postoperatively until quad strength can be sufficient to normalize your gait.